station. Radio you can touch. Oh, gasp. I'm so excited. This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. As a high Bob Lutz, higher than a kite, my answer would be, no, man, I can't do it. Hey, man, I'm high. Oh, shocking. Monsters. Jeff Lutz. Please, someone, at Bob Lutz, tell him how misguided he is. 97.5 and 1240 KFH. It's an excursion into the odd and into the very, very different. Stand by for action. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a Monday edition, the Bob and Jeff Show, KFH Radio. I'm Bob Lutz, Jeff Lutz co-hosting. Max Power is producing and engineering 869-1240, the IHOP hotline. Another, uh, well, we've had a stretch of uh, beautiful weather, but no rain. We need the rain. It's not going to rain for a while. What are they saying down there at uh, Action 12? Or Storm? You know what it's called. Do you like uh, just looking dumb? Is that what you're Storm aiming for? Team 12, what are they saying? They say it's not going to rain for a while. Well, did you have that? Rain on the horizon. You had that exact conversation? I wasn't in the morning meeting today, but that's been the conversation for most days, uh, past and present. Uh, That's too bad. um, We need rain. We do. We sure do. Dry. We had a golf tournament Friday at Sand Creek Station. A lot of people showed up. Uh, Really appreciative of everyone who was there. Uh, Gorgeous day. Friday went very well. Uh, had a clinic with your friend Steve Linhard on Saturday. Why are you calling my friend? Well, he is your friend. He's a good guy. You don't think he's your friend? I don't know. I he's spo- my friend. I haven't spoken with him in years. He always asks about you. Well, that's nice. Uh, yeah, I had a good time with him. Excellent. I'm going to start throwing in that ah uh, between my uh, funny stuff like uh, Nate Bargatze. You do whatever you, you feel SNL? like. watch SNL? Of course. Now. You know, I'm a Bargatze fan. He's my favorite comedian All right. of this time. Not as funny in his monologue as he was his first time hosting. I thought both monologues were kind of mid for him. Uh, he must be saving all of his material for his specials and things like that. That seems counterproductive. There are many more oh, people, people know, watching SNL. Yeah, but people know him. They know he's funny. They already get it. If you're going to be on the bar, he's hosting SNL. You're not trying to expand your uh, your fan base? This is an opportunity. All he's done over the last two years is expand his fan base. This is an opportunity. I don't know if he can get more fans. He probably has more fans than he knows what to do with. He's playing arenas across the globe. Uh, now, I do believe this. His skits are funny. The 1776 stuff, that's him uh, to a T. Very funny. Sure. Uh, he'll do that every time he hosts, I hope. Uh, well, he kind of has to. Playing man. off words. Uh, it's just brilliant. Just absolutely brilliant. Well, there's so many other places they could go with that. Did you watch? Uh... Well, then they will go there. The whole, the whole thing was funny where Heidi Gardner was eating the uh, giant hamburger. Let's, I, I cried laughing. Well, let's talk about uh, Jane Wickline and the Weekend Update, the song that she did. Absolutely hilarious and uh, wonderful. Here's the problem with that. It's hard to understand. No, it wasn't. With the, uh, with the music over it and yeah, go as listen quickly to, as the pace was. Go listen to it on YouTube a couple times. It's, I'm going to have to. Uh, I almost put up closed captioning. It's pretty funny. It's good stuff. Well, I, th- I think it was funny. No, it was. You don't know. I've listened to it like ten times. It's but a, you didn't understand it when it happened. A lot of it I did. Some of it, no, I didn't. But it a lot hard. of it I did. That's my point. And after a while it got to the, well, I, I don't really know what she's talking about here. And that's not being an well, old you, man either. It is. It's being an old man. No, it's not. You don't You don't connect with Gen Z the way folks like I do. and You don't connect with Gen Z. Oh, I know what Gen Z's thinking. Gen Z is before, so far removed from anything Gen you Z think about. It. You're not even, you don't even have a Gen. You don't even have a, what generation are you? The millennials. You're a millennial? Of course. That may be the I least, graduated in 2000 and... Uno. That may be the least productive generation we've had. I'm not sure about that. I think we're doing just fine. My group did very well. You did all right with all the handouts you got. Oh, brother. <laughs> so they're handouts. I don't know. Were they? No. Okay. 
What generation had the handouts? The greatest generation? You think I've gotten a handout in my life? The New Deal? I've worked for every penny I've ever had. Excellent. And you know that. And you keep coming in here and degrading it. <laughs> and you do shouldn't I? do that. That's not a, what a good son would do. What would a good son do? Be proud of his father. How do you know I'm not proud of I him? I don't think you are. There's no indication. There's plenty of indications. Give me one. I just said that I wasn't not proud of you. Then say you are proud of me. I'm not not proud of you. Say it. No, I'm not. I don't get backed into a corner like that. I don't like being back. You just say, say it. It. I'll say it uh, during the show at a time you least expect it. I thought the uh, the skit at the top of the water slide was funny. Eh. It was funny. It was, it was okay. Funny. It wasn't the best skit of the day. Sabado Gigante. But eh. normally I don't hang with all the skits, and Saturday I did. Good. All of them. No, well, yeah. I turned it off after Weekend Update and watched the rest of the show on YouTube, as I typically do. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, we go to bed. Now, we got a lot of sports to talk about today. We have Matt Beeler, head football coach at Conway Springs, coming up at 2.45. Uh, the Guardians play at 3 today. What are you, you going to do in that hour? Who do you have on the show from 3 to 3.50? we got a lot of talking we're going to be doing. Well, I'm going to be sitting in that chair right there. Turn to my right no, or you said, my you back said you'd ignore you. this. What are you talking about? I thought you said you were going to ignore the playoffs. Of course I'm going to ignore the playoffs. <laughs> Is that what I <laughs> what said? I swore I could have heard, no, I I don't heard think, from you. I don't think I said that. I think I'll watch every pitch of every game. Well, the game last night, but the two games yesterday, for different reasons, were as compelling as baseball can possibly be. Uh, the Phillies-Mets game, the Mets, man, how hard are they to beat? Pretty relentless. And the Phillies finally did it, and I give them a lot of credit. Uh, I've never seen anything like the Mets. Mark Vientos, Vientos. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. Why don't the Cardinals have a guy like that? Well, you do. You ruin them all. As we've already discussed this. Well, we're not going to ruin anymore. We're on a new path to uh, glory. Well, I hope so. There's no question about it. Absolutely no you question. You don't have anybody like Mark Vientos sure, here. Sure, absolutely not. Uh, this is young guy that comes up and just has a... Chase has the water? It. Chase the water. I get so sick of you talking about Chase What about Kyle Manzar? What about... Uh, These guys aren't players. They're not? What about uh, Travis Bazzano? He's he a come true up? guy. Vientos? Yes. Yeah, he's, he had a great year, and he's having uh, an unbelievable postseason so far. And uh, that's, these that's, are the kind of... the post, that's why I like the postseason. And then last night's game, is Fernando Tatis Jr. well? Uh, he's pretty he excited. Well? What do you or mean? Is he a, a madman? He's a little bit of a madman, but is that is that? Oh, that's. Here, no I'm trying to figure it. out if I'm if I'm the investigator and I'm sitting at the LAPD and somebody comes in and says, "Okay, we had all this ruckus last night at the game," and I'm taking notes and I've got both sides presenting their their case and and their evidence. Uh, first of all, we have Jack Flaherty and Manny Machado. I, I don't know what that's about. Flaherty, that's, he's a loose cannon. I used to love the kid. I still like him. I didn't know why he was yelling at Manny Machado. I don't know what's going on inside that game. Uh, I don't know what Machado may have said. It's a high level of competition. That's what's going on. I get and, it. And everything that's said is going to be heightened, and every move is going to be uh, put, uh, there's going to be a microscope on well, actually, it. Actually, I got it out of order. The first thing was, uh, Profar taking the home run back. That was awesome. Into the crowd, and then kind of having a little fun with the crowd. Yeah, it maybe went on a little too long, um, but it was still pretty awesome. If you're going to do that, you might as well milk it a And then bit. later on, we have uh, the crowd getting unruly, and I don't know what happened to set that off. Uh, I saw Machado, did you, or Tatis, did you see the gyrations he was doing to the crowd? No, I, I think I was asleep by the time the stuff, uh, but I'm I saw. I'm talking about today, uh, the stuff between innings. I don't know if they've even, even showed this in the game. I mean, he's gyrating his body. He's kind of, it's almost lewd. Uh, and then there's pelting of a couple of the Padres, Tatis and Profar with some 
items out of the stands. They have to halt the game. Uh, the umpires, the security comes out. Poor you, Darvish, who's on a roll at that time, has to wait an extra 10 minutes to start the inning. So you got the crowd in L.A. just going bonkers, uh, throwing stuff at the Padres. And then you got Tatis in the dugout making gestures with his tongue. And, and I don't know what this guy, I think he might be crazy. Is that bad? I is, don't know. You tell me. I don't like it. Well, he's he's not under the the microscope that he was under at one point when he was a a budding and up and coming superstar. Then he gets popped for uh, performance enhancing drugs. You lay low. He's in San Diego. The the well, eyes. He's in L.A. last night. But I'm talking about he plays for San Diego. The the eyes aren't on him as much, so he's probably let that go to his head a little bit. I'm just going to be me, and uh, me is kind of nuts. But me is also pretty awesome at baseball still. Well, yeah, he's, he had two home runs last night. Crushed him and a double. But he's insane. What what are you going to do with the guy? You're going to put him in uh, right field, and. Uh, Put him at third in the lineup or second or wherever he now, bats. And- this series shifts to San Diego for Game Three tomorrow night, and it's going to be nu- it's going to be crazy. Of course, here you have the Dodgers. Uh, outside of Flaherty and his antics, but you've got veteran leadership. Otani, Betts, and Freeman just aren't going to be crazy, right? They're not insane. They're, they're not, not. They're not like that. They're not. They're not like that. And on the other side, you got Profar, Tatis. Uh, to a lesser extent, Machado, although he's not really uh, crazy. Pro far isn't either. Eh, no, but they, I think, I think, uh, I don't know what to think. They're a team that has a different kind of I've character. I told you I think San Diego is going to go to the World Series. Oh, maybe they will, maybe they won't. That'll, that'll play out over the next well, uh, I don't, couple I don't, weeks. I'm not a maybe they will, maybe they won't guy. I am. It's baseball. And I don't, and predict, I don't like that. I don't like that. Baseball. I don't like people who... Sit on the fence. I'm going to go no, uh, no, on one side of the fence. Great. The fence is it's baseball. That's my side of the fence. Well, not, that's a boring thing. The White Sox can win two teams, out of three from somebody. It's, from you. It's, there's uh, nobody that's, that uh, wants to listen to this show that wants us to be on, on the fence. Well, they should uh, they should listen to the show for realistic. I mean, okay, you made a pick. Who cares? Well, we, all, we always make It doesn't picks. matter. We always make picks. Okay. It's wonderful. But it doesn't matter. Well, anything it doesn't ma- it doesn't anything matter. can happen in a baseball game. In it's two out of three now for both National League series. Like I said, Who am I for? Am I three for games the Padres? Any, I don't know. I was. But I don't think I thought Tatis took it overboard. I need some of my uh people to call me and tell me. Sure. Uh, but I think Flaherty may have taken it overboard. I don't know. Who cares? I the Guardi- care. The Guardians play in four- I don't care about the Guardians. That's the least interesting of the series. Why? It just is. Why? Because neither... Eh. Why? The it's Royals say- and Yankees is interesting. They had a go back and forth. Okay, we'll, and t- we'll talk more about that later. Tell me why Guardians... It's Tigers is not as interesting. Neither they team put- is as compelling. Why? They don't have the star power. They, they, it's just, they just don't. You, you can't compare the star power. Oh, okay. Well, there are a whole lot of shutouts in this series, right, in, the, in this round? Were there a lot of shutouts? Oh, the Guardians? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, the I'm Guardians not, got the only one. No you stars. You can't compare star seven, power. Seven runs, no you stars. Got, look at the Royals and the Yankees. You got Judge, Soto, Witt. Who cares? Uh, you got all kinds. I got a better team. I got more the wins. Padres, Dodgers, stars everywhere. Great. Look at the Phillies, Mets, stars. Yeah, it's uh, maybe it's baseball's fault. Right. We got when Bryce Harper, oh, Tony, he's up in five batters. Oh, Everyone you're going to jump on that wagon. Well, give me a break. When you uh, when you when you set your watch to watch Bryce Harper hit, uh, that's a star, man. You know what I want? I don't care about stars. I win. Oh boy, go Tigers, go. Good. Go Tigers, a lot of stars go. on the I Tigers. Can't, I can't tell you how much you just switched me. Good. Go Tigers, go. You That's win. wonderful. You win. Sure do. What have you won? More than the Tigers. What have you won More in your More games life? than the Royals. Tell me what. No, tell me what. When you say you win. More games than the Royals. You're talking about this year. Every year. 
pretty much. Every year of my life, I, why, I would love why, to see that match. The, the Royals are hanging a couple, aren't they? No, they, they lost. Three, they got two banners they're hanging. They lost Saturday, from what I remember. Right? They got an 85 so banner, we, which killed me. We got two and banners. They got a 2015 banner. We got two banners. Yeah, from the uh, Ice Age. No, they're banners. They fly forever. That's why we say Don't it. Don't get cocky on me after one win. <laughs> That is well, so I'm just, weak. I'm just sick and bold. It's the least compelling series. It uh, is the least compelling series. No, it's not. Look at the ratings. I don't care about the ratings. Well, I, don't care about, a, I don't care about idiots who, well, uh, Andres Galarraga didn't play in this game. I better turn the Andres channel. Galarraga? Yeah. Really, that's what the idiots are saying. Probably. You know, you know what the idiot's saying? That. What you just said. Right. That's, what I, that's my point. That's, an, that's what an idiot says. Exactly. I hate to use the word idiot. I'm glad we agree. I'm sorry. Well, I'll watch that game. I'm interested in well, I'm it. I'm watching it right here. I'm not leaving. I'm interested in it. But I'm more interested in tonight's Yankees. You can head upstairs. Game. And I'm more interested in tomorrow's two National League games. Great. You can head upstairs. I'll watch they're, the game. They're more compelling. Great. Head upstairs. <laughs> I don't need you. And Misty I've and got I, you. I, <laughs> I got you. I I own you. Why do you think that? My goodness. You're, you're the worst at arguing I've ever even seen. You get so defensive about this Not stuff. defensive. Go upstairs. You'd have to do the show alone. At, at uh, After the show, you'll head upstairs. No, uh, no. At 3 o'clock. No, well, after you're not, the show. You're not leaving after the game? Of course not. Uh, after the show, no. After the game, yes. Well, I have to go get my wife. Fine. I'll be right there. I'm not going to leave and miss part of the game. Well, it's on radio. I like watching. Actually, it's not. A, you don't have Sirius XM. I have the MLB app. Of course, I can listen to it. Well, that's how I'll listen to it as I drive to Wellington. Well, he head on. And then when we get home tonight, we'll get comfortable and watch the uh, Yankees and Royals and then switch over and watch some of the Chiefs and Saints. Big night for Kansas City sports. Sure. Two teams in prime time. I, I guarantee you that hasn't happened before. Uh, Unlikely. I and, can't say never, but. Well, I'll say it. I'll say uh, never? never. Yeah. Huh. The Royals were in the playoffs a lot in the 70s and 80s. They were still Monday Night Football. And there was Monday Night Football in 2014 and 2015. I'll, I'll bet they weren't on in prime time. You don't think? I'll bet, I'll bet not. And I don't think uh, there were... Oh, here we go. I'm going to look. The fact checker. The, the Daniel Dale of, uh, of Bob and Jeff. Uh, you're not going to look. You can't find that. Of course I can. That's, that's impossible to find. I'll at least look at 2014 and 15. You, you, they weren't on uh, the... the uh, no. Didn't happen. You don't think? No. Okay. So anyway, uh, a good weekend. The one, the one thing that kind of escaped me is high school football on Friday night. I was not as locked in as normal, and it felt weird to me. Were there any big? Uh, I, I've sort of caught up, uh, but were there any big goings on? Uh, well, Eisenhower lost to. I saw that. Well, our it was Andover Center lost to Goddard. I saw that. Our friend Tommy Beeson pulled an upset. Big win for the kid. And uh, and Andover darn near got Goddard Eisenhower. Yes. That kind of juxtaposition. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I already. Do you, do you, do you understand you didn't what read I'm my saying? my Friday Five? No, but do you see what I'm saying? I don't know. Goddard beat very highly ranked, number one ranked Andover Central. Uh, Andover Central, number one ranked. And then... Andover almost got very highly ranked Goddard Eisenhower, but uh, fell just a little bit short. Interesting. I doubt that was covered in most mainstream media. We, uh, we had all of it. By the way, I want to mention, I read this morning, Scott Pask, our friend from Keisha Covered, uh, mentioned that longtime Augusta basketball coach and athletic director, Armin Hilliard, passed away. Man, Armin was Armin was at Augusta when I started at the Eagle back in the seventies, and uh, as nice a guy as you'd ever want to meet, 
And I want to send out our condolences uh, to Armand, uh, Armand's family and everyone who uh, knew him. An absolute Augusta legend. Armand Hilliard passed, passed, Hilliard passed away today or last night. I'm not sure which, but uh, that goes all the way back to my early years at the Eagle. Yeah, he's probably just a little bit older than you. Let me think about that. I'd say he's 10, at least 10 to 15 years older than me. There's a lot bigger difference between 20 and 30 than there is between 70 and 80. You know what like I'm saying? He was probably in his 30s. Could have been. Because uh, I think he'd already been around a while. Sure. I, I'm not familiar with of the you're not. young man. I didn't. Our paths never crossed, but... Uh, again, I echo those condolences. Uh, anyway. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk some NFL as we get close to the first pitch for the JV game in the American League playoffs. <laughs> Wasn't listening. <laughs> back in a minute. This is the Bob and Jeff Show. What happened in football yesterday? How'd your fantasy team do? Uh, we took it to the guy who picked all the Chiefs, so he's still got a few guys to go, but we're going to hammer well, him. Yeah, if he picked all the Chiefs, I'd say he has a few guys. I don't guys know if he has go. Mahal. He has a couple Chiefs. He has the Chiefs defense. I don't know. We're gonna Anyway, we had a great week. I had another great week in all my fantasy leagues. It's just it never ends, basically. What I imagine you... Uh, lost to Duda. That was the game everybody had their eyes on, the JV game. Yeah. Uh, looks like I'm going to lose that one, That's unfortunately. But uh, you can't win them all. And um, I'm going to be back uh, in the thick of things once I get my running backs back. I did a nice job uh, getting Dowdle from, uh, off the waiver wire. That was a good move. He did okay. Uh, Dunze didn't do much. Uh Marvin Harrison Jr.'s had one good game. Yeah, he had two. Didn't I'm he have... about ready to get rid of him. Well, trade him to us. We'll take him. Uh, this kid Thomas for uh, Jacksonville's playing well, but I had him on my bench. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I got to get Pacheco and, and McCaffrey back, and I don't know if I am. You might not, but you got to uh, piece it together. We all go well, through I'm injuries. Trying to piece it. No, not like that. Yeah, I like that. No, Everybody goes you through don't, it. No, you haven't had a star injured. You haven't had your first two picks. I traded Malik Neighbors. I don't want Malik Neighbors. Okay. I don't care. I didn't about ask it. if you wanted him. Who do you want to trade me now? Uh, I don't want to trade anybody, anybody. Well, that's not very friendly of you. You usually try to help me. Not this year. Not if not with the attitude you're presenting on this show today. That's too which bad. Which is awful. What do you mean? Uh, here's what happened in the NFL yesterday. Well, I'm going to tell you what 16 happened. 16 hours of football. I did not catch all of it, but I, I caught some of it. I'm going to tell you what happened uh, if I can find our picks. I, I hope don't you don't. The picks were awful. I don't know what I've done with them, frankly. I don't either. Here they are. Um, you have picked three correctly so far. Yeah, I know, but it's been bad. Uh, you missed your bonus game. I missed my eight-point game, too. Uh, yeah, you've not done well. Duda's lights out. If he gets New Orleans tonight, he will have gone 7-2 and two overall with a 10-point bonus win. What's his point total stand at right now? His point total right now is 35. Goodness. Your point. He total might only right be fourteen now, or fifteen out of lat, out of fourth. Your point total right now is eleven. Not good. My point total right now is nineteen. Max's point total right now is uh, five. five. Josh Allen's the man, though, right? And Max? Anthony's point total right now is minus eight. Uh oh. 
He hasn't gotten a game right, and his eight-point pick uh, with Buffalo failed him as well. Well, he must have gotten some game right. No, he didn't get any right. Well, then he'd be well below minus eight. No, you, you, that's zero. Oh, yeah. What is wrong with you? Anyway, Max, wait, wait Josh Allen. No, no, wait a minute. Let's talk about this. I don't want to. I never imagined. You still have that one hair. I wish you'd just do something oh, about we're gonna, that. Every time you're on the defensive. Oh, it's, I can't stop looking at it. Every It comes out from here, and it just looks funny. Well, let's shave it. We shave let me our ask, head. We let shave me our ask head. you a question. I could have sworn when I was a young man and you were born, if somebody asked me, when you're uh, 69 and your son, my goodness, he'll be 40, 41 years old, uh, who do you think will be smarter? Why is I would have said Why is it intelligence when I just, because we're talking about a guy missing games and he missed his bonus, it seems it, in my head, which I know isn't right, it doesn't make me not smart, it just uh, is an oversight that you miss the you get negative points for the other games you miss too. Anyway, I not... would have said, yeah, I, I expect Jeff to be smarter than me when I'm 69. I mean, that, and I am. That would uh, make sense, but it's not even close, man. What do you think makes you so smart? I don't know. I just because have you it. add up these numbers sometimes. I just have it. Uh, I guess what stood out to me uh, was the Baltimore Cincinnati game. And the fact that uh, Cincinnati got conservative in overtime after having Joe Burrow just tear it apart in regulation. What are they doing? I don't know. For a 50-yard field goal and the snaps, the, the, the holder can't get the ball down? Are you kidding me? They have a good. They, the, they've got a good offense e- either way. They've got Chase Brown. They've got guys you can run it. Chase they, Brown? Yeah. And Zach Moss, they have some good running backs. They have a good offense overall. They're okay, but they but uh, Burrow was just ripping it. I know he was. He threw a, a costly interception, but for for the most part, yes, he was great. They're now one and four. Uh, I don't get it. I'm going to say this again. I know Cleveland's terrible, but the Washington Commanders, they've got my attention. We'll see. They've got a, uh, a sort of, not really, but a kind of tough stretch coming up uh, where we'll find out more. I think they're good. I don't think there's any question that they're good. But we want to see them in games that matter. They're the matter. story of the year so far. Well, Jaden Daniels. And the, uh, and the uh, Minnesota Vikings. Those are the two. Jaden Daniels is the story. And now the commanders. Name two other players. Uh, McLaren, uh, that, that other kid. Name anyone on their defense. Uh, John Jones. Yep, he's sure there. Nose tackle. They're a, they're a story. The whole team's a story. Uh, those are the two big takeaways. And and then Minnesota beating the Jets. Uh, Josh Allen was horrific, especially early in that game against Houston. Uh, I was excited about that game, and he just looked terrible. He was he was horrific for most of the game. What did he finish, like 10 of 30 or something like that? Uh, and no more Buffalo games on the picks because I'm tired of hearing that Josh Allen is the man. This guy's not won anything what ever. What are you after Max for today? I just today? don't want to hear it anymore. He, he has he no receivers that can catch. That's his problem. He was 9 of 30. I could have thrown to you and Jeff and was, been better than yeah, that. Yeah, there was 22 and drops. And by the way, why was, he, why was he good early in the year? He had the same receivers. I don't know. They just weren't catching. He had them. They wouldn't catch the ball. <laughs> I don't know. He's don't, terrible he had 21 right now. drops yesterday. Just say it, Max. It's okay. But he's He was not. awful yesterday. I'd, t- I'd take him in a Cost minute. Cost him the game. Cost me my four points. And he cost Max. Know, Six that's points. Painful. That's what, he should be yeah, mad now. You should be yeah. mad at Josh Allen. I'm not mad at Josh Allen. I mean, uh, Dude and, and me are the only ones that picked it, Houston. And his Houston coach. for 10 for dudes. What did you have him at? I have for five. I don't think I got to start doing the Duda and pick everything for 10. I don't like that, but it, it really upsets me, in fact. But it's, it's the only way you can do it, apparently. If you can't beat them, join them. Well, you guys go right ahead and start picking for 10 every game and all. That's what dude is doing. And he's not even in the hunt. He had a good week this week. He's got to be in the hunt now. He had 35 points. Next week will be terrible. 
Well, we'll see. I don't know. He's been on fire. If Bob. he gets, if he keeps getting ten Say point that, bonuses. Matt, sorry, Matt. What? Both of you can't talk at once. I just said, Go dude, has been, dude has been on fire. On fire. He was terrible last week. Hit the ten. He had a good twice. week this week. He's terrible. He doesn't know what he's doing. If it weren't for you, and uh, if it weren't for you, he'd be in last place. Just helping him out. Anthony's the one that's taking the hit this week. Just had an awful week of picks. Um, so anyway, it wasn't a really captivating NFL week. I'm much more into the baseball. And I'll say this. The baseball has come through in a big way so far. Of course. The games have been exciting, except for yours. You ran away a little bit. Thank you. Took it to them. Is Scoobal going today? Yes. If you can get this one, it's over. Well, I'd like to think so. Uh, but I don't know if you can beat him. I know we can beat him. I know we can beat him. David Fry is good against him. Ramirez is good against him. We'll scratch out a few and hand it over. <laughs> well, I don't want Did you. Did you watch the game? No, I, I didn't think... see the I told you I didn't I know, see the game. I know, but good I was, grief. Saturday was a really busy day. I didn't see that game. That's the one I didn't see. I know, and that's a, upsetting. You sent me some cryptic text. Well, I thought you were watching the, the game. Out. Which is which? Which Who is doesn't so watch irritating. the Guardians? Do you not know what I had going on Saturday? No, you don't tell me what's going on. I'm just assume that on Saturdays I'm busy. Fine, but you watched every other game. Yeah, I got home. Well, Lane Thomas hit a three-run homer in the first yeah, inning. Yeah, you sent me some. Well, there's an acquisition. I, I thought the Cardinals got somebody. Who cares? The Cardinals don't get anybody. Why would you send that to yeah, me? Yeah, the Cardinals got the corpse of Bobby Bonilla. I mean, when I get that kind of a text, I'm thinking, well, what, what, what did we get? And I look it up, and I, and I go, well, he must be talking about the Guardians. And it's deadline acquisition Lane Thomas. And then I fig- I, who's had about nine hits since you got yeah, him in August. He had about 40 in September. Uh, so good for him and good for you. And we'll see if he can win today. I hope you didn't text Tom Thurber. I don't have Tom Thurber's number. Good. I don't what- care. Would you, you have? Know what? I don't care about Tom Thurber. Really? You don't yeah. care about him? Not right now. I care about my team and my team only. I'm not a rub it in guy. If your team loses, hey, you're not going to hear from me. Good. Uh, nor should we. Unless it's the Royals, then maybe. Who are you going to text then? If, if the Guardians win the World Series, I'm going to text everybody. Really? And I might, it's, they might banish me from Earth. You're going to text everybody you know? Yeah. Nobody will want anything to do with you ever again. That's my point. I don't care. You don't care about people. What a terrible thing to That's say. That's not what I said, but... Well, you just said you don't care if anybody has anything no, to do with you. No, I don't. Well, that's not caring about people. And it's going to last a whole year. As long as we're reigning defending champions, you're going to hear from me, folks. That's terrible. That's a bad look. Uh, just a terrible look. Uh, last well, we got week, ten wins to go. Last week I was. Uh, I'm switching gears. I don't care about the Guardians. I do. What's what do you don't got? Care about them? May not watch them. Good. I will. Uh, so Turn last on, week, in fact, last week we uh, we were in Wellington. I was uh, my with my wife, and we decided to get big cheese pizza and bring it home. And you remember big it's a cheese staple pizza. of the Wellington community. You remember big cheese pizza over there Who on wouldn't? West Street, Central and West Street. They had big cheese pizza. Uh, their salad bar was fantastic, and they had these little cinnamon breadsticks that were just unbelievable. You know what that, uh, you're kind of, are you demeaning their pizza? Like, Well, what I'm going to say about their pizza is it's really good, except it doesn't have sauce, red sauce. None? I didn't sense any. Hmm. So it was kind of strange. Is that, is that how you remember Big Cheese Pizza? I don't remember like that, no. I would assume because it's pizza, it would have pizza sauce. But who's to say? Well, sometimes, you know, you have different kind of sauces for pizza. We'll yeah. look into that in more detail. Maybe we but... can call them and get them on the air. Well, no, I don't want to get them on the air. I'm Did just you... telling you. Why do, why do you have to do... I don't like you on this show when you're... When you're when you've got a Guardians game, well, turn it on. It's a terrible look. Did you see my? I hope Detroit. What if Detroit scores four in the first? Not going to be a lot of uh, pleasantries going on here. Well, you can't just punt the show. 
Well, I believe in Matthew Boyd. I don't care about Matthew Boyd. He's I'm pitching. Ask, I'm asking you what happens if Detroit scores four in the first. Head home. You, you won't even finish I'll the I'll probably show. head home, yep. <laughs> Better find some guests. Well, Tony, Tony Deucing, our program director, I hope will fire you at that point. <laughs> oh, bring it. Here's uh, Matt Beeler, the head football coach at Conway Springs. They're having another special year. Coach, welcome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, you come off a state championship season. Uh, The program at Conway Springs has been an interesting one. Certainly for many years, it was a powerhouse. Then it took a little step back for a while. Uh, Now it's become a powerhouse again. It's interesting how this stuff works in small communities. You've been associated with Conway Springs uh, for quite some time. Just describe the atmosphere in that community uh, as it relates to football. Well, it's a special place to be. Uh, the The community rallies behind it. Um, you know, you you get all the all the people that show up to games. You get uh, when you go away, you get a, a great crowd going uh, to those as well, and they even have signs that say "Turn the light out, last one." So it's it's a it's a neat place, and it's great to play football there. Yeah, I might uh, dispute the claim. I mean, I guess there was a small step back, but even you know the year before last, twenty twenty two, you went uh, seven and four, but you won a couple playoff games. Obviously, uh, that leads into a state championship. Uh, did you feel that momentum at the time? Did you feel like you know we're going back a couple years now? But twenty twenty two, did that feel like uh, a start of something that's that's still continuing now? You know, we play in a really competitive league, so uh, the, some of those losses that we had or several of those were to, to bigger schools that uh, we had we had to play against, and, and they're great programs. And, and we were in some of those games, and those those games made us what we were when we got to our division. And, and um, you know, we lost there in the, in the sectional five years in a row and then the sub-state in 2022. And um, we felt like we had a great nucleus coming back for last year, and, and the kids showed it. We still – started out 0-2 uh, to Kingman and Garden Plain, but um, those were tough games. Matt Beeler with us from Conway Springs. 5-0, and now more than halfway through uh, the regular season. Uh, tell us a little bit about this team. Who makes it go? Tell, give us some of the, uh, uh, the personnel. We got 10 seniors back, um, and so that's that's big. When you've got a, a, an upper class group and and then some juniors that step into there, um, I think that plays a big part of, of those guys being 17, 18 years old. And, and uh, but Isaac Winter is probably the one that steps out with uh, both sides of the ball, being a a guy that's you know got a lot of carries this year. And, and when he finds his seam, he's got the speed to, to go the distance and, and pretty electric there. And we like to run the football, and so um, having a guy like that. Um, really helps us out, and you know, Kate Howell's uh, is, is a is a blocking back, but uh, that's kind of a lineman slash back, and he he gets about five or six carries as that fullback. But you know, being two hundred and twenty pounds, two hundred and fifteen pounds, he's a load when he's a lead blocker for for guys to handle. Um, and then we have two other seniors, and Grant Fisher and Eli Howard that have both had great years and and step in at some of those positions, and and Junior Logan Osner stepped up and has shown that uh, he can not only run the ball, but it can throw it to our targets of Connor Rusco and Lane Whitney, who are two 6'3 and 6'4 tight ends. So, yeah, you your running backs are kind of like uh, Green Bay Packers quarterbacks. It's just like once one leaves, they get another one in that, that's really great, and you've kind of done the same with running backs. Obviously, that's that's your style. That's the offense you run. But is can you identify who that guy's going to be before he gets to Conway Springs? Do you know, uh, you know who has that potential, or is it all just kind of about how they develop when, when they're in the program? You know, we've noticed coming through the program, some of them we see in middle school that'll be pretty special. And, you know, but it's kind of neat when you see those guys step up from their freshman to sophomore year and just really have uh, embodied what we asked for and, and, and hitting the weight room and, and developing themselves. And, you know, Isaac's been a weight room warrior type of kid and, and has built himself to, to that ability and, and uh, you know, works on his speed. And, you know, for us to run the ball, we also can't not talk about the offensive line. We've got um, a, a two-year starter, been an All-State player in Cooper Coster. He's 6'4", 2, 255, and 
you know, he leads the way. And then Ashton Stoll, who was on the state championship team last year. And, um, and then we've got a couple of newcomers that have filled those spots. You know, Lane Whitney was a lineman that went back to tight end. So, so we've been able to, to do that and have some younger guys come up and step in on the line, and that's really helped us. Matt Bela, the head football coach at Conway Springs. Again, 5-0 and with a game coming up uh, Friday night at Sterling. Uh, you've only given up uh, 31 points all year. 24 of those came in a 45-24 win over Medicine Lodge, which has a really good team. Uh, you beat Garden Plain, uh, a rival, 13-7. to Those have been the two biggest tests for you. And to get wins on the road in both of those places uh, makes a pretty good statement, doesn't it? We are happy, uh, proud of how the kids have, have uh, you know, really been disciplined on wherever they play to, to play their game. And, and we're going to have to be that way at Sterling this week. You know, they've, they, they knocked off Medicine Lodge and, and uh, are looking really good right now. And so we're going to have our work cut out for us on Friday night. What did that uh, win over Garden Plain symbolize for your team? You mentioned the 0-2 start last year. You go on to win to a state championship. One of those losses was to Garden Plain. I think the last time you'd beaten them was in 2018, and even in those state championship years, kind of earlier in the in the century, I guess, that was a team that gave you fits. So uh, what did it mean to beat them, and, and what does that say about uh, your program? You know, we played Garden Plain a lot, and, and – uh over the years, some years it was twice in a year, and, and uh, the last six years, I think that game's been decided by a touchdown or less, or a couple of years by one point. So it was a great win. Uh, our kids were, were very um, pleased after that night of, of being able to, to take care of that on the road. Um, it's a tough place to play, a tough environment. Um, you know, and it, it was a great test for us, and, and I think it told our kids that they can play with anybody, and, and that's what we've kind of had that mentality that. We're going to get everybody's best shot, and we're going to have to to go in and and play great football. Matt Beeler, our guest, uh, uh, you played at Conway, right? Uh, Just verify that for me. I think I'm I'm 99% sure I'm right about that. I I did not, sir. I I did not. I came in in 1998. That 1% always wins out. (laughs) There you Uh, go. So So you coached there since 2009. Uh, I'm curious. I'm curious, and before that, an assistant, but I'm curious uh, what kind of hold that community has on you because that's a long time to coach at a smaller high school. You've obviously proven yourself as uh, someone who can really coach the game of football, but what is it about Conway Springs that, that kind of has you in its grasp? You know, there's great people there, and, and my kids went grew up through, that, through there, and, and I was able to raise them. Um, through the school system, and, and I really enjoy my job and the people I work with, and, and um, it's just great people and great community. And where did you say you went to, went to high school? Uh, I went to Harrington High School and graduated in 1993. There you go. I knew it was one of those schools. Not really. I screwed that up badly. Go ahead, Jeff. So so do you feel like a, a 1A school? Your numbers are, are pretty good, probably really good for, for 1A, but you're such a powerhouse that you probably could play in 2A or, or even higher than that. It's almost like an Andale situation where, you know, they're a smaller school, but everybody plays football. Uh, so does it feel does it feel that way to you? Do you feel like a small school? It's been, you know, since I've been able to be there and see us drop uh, over 100 kids since 1998, and, you know, through those years, it's been tough. Uh, we're, we're at 70 boys, and we get uh, close to 40 of them out for football. So, uh, you know, when they look at the state averages, a lot of them are around 20-some, 25%, and we're over over 50%. We're, we're, we feel blessed with that. Um, you know, the kids, they do look forward to coming out and, and um, you know, and, and – uh, they don't really look at size and things like that. They just know they got to come out and do what, what's asked of them. And then that's a good point that Jeff brought up, Matt, because there are so many classes uh, in football in the state of Kansas, and and I honestly don't think we need this many, but I haven't been able to budge anyone in the Kansas State High School Activities Association uh, for 40 years of kind of whining about that. Uh, do you ever have a moment, or do you think any of your players or community members have a moment where they say, "Man, it'd be kind of nice to uh, kind of be, be kind of fun to see how we stacked up against 
Cheney or or somebody like that. And uh, does that ever enter your head? We just like I, I learned a long time ago, and from from Coach Cottrell, Fred Cottrell, that you just play the schedules given to you, and you do the best you can in that schedule. And that's what we that's what we strive about and uh, to to do, you know. And every every uh, two years we go and have that scheduling meeting, and we find out where we're listed and where we play, and and then we have to come up with those first couple of games throughout the year and find out who's schedule mixes and fits. And but um, yeah, there's there's some really good teams out there, and and uh, it, it's nice when you do play them because when you get uh, great competition, then uh, it's able you're able to um, see where you're at and, and make you better. Well, that damn Fred Cottrell talking common sense all the time. I, if I if I was a marketer, I'd uh, I'd try to market a game like that, but uh, I'm not. So uh, you've had tremendous success through the years doing it your way. We appreciate your time on the show. Best of luck coming up Friday at Sterling Conway Springs, trying to go to six and zero. Thanks, Matt. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, Matt Beeler from. Conway Springs. Man, I'd like to see some of these games. Who wouldn't? Wouldn't you like to see Andale play uh, uh, Goddard Eisenhower? Wouldn't you like to see uh, some of that? Yeah, that'd be the one game right there. No, I'm, I'd I'm, love I'm, to I'm see just it. giving you an example. You know, give a better you, example. Wouldn't you like, well, that'd be a great game. How about Andale Andover Central? How about, how about, how about Andale Northwest? Yeesh, not w- sure. Would you like that one? Not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? I don't think no. I don't think Andale could keep up with Northwest. I don't know what. Uh, I don't I, know. If I, they kinda, could. I kind of know. You don't know. I'm not trying to. I kind of know. You don't know. I kind of know. But you don't. Know. Let's get Steve Martin on the show. He went to Andale. He coaches at Northwest. I'll get Steve Martin on the I show he, this week. I bet he'd tell us. And I'll ask him that. No, very I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask. Him. No, you won't be here. When? I'm gonna do it Wednesday. You're not here. Although I don't know what I'm gonna do Wednesday. Uh, nobody's available. I don't know what Duda and Anthony are even around for. They're never available. I hear you. I mean, we need we need people. I mean, I just am I, I going to have to look for another co-host? I don't know. Maybe you want to do it with David Michael Hahn? I can nah, get him on the. That wasn't uh, that. that, that had a great en- show Friday. I didn't enjoy that. Everybody show. loved it. You didn't listen. I didn't enjoy it. Turn on the baseball game. <laughs> Ah, uh, we got another hour to go. Flip it Jeff's on. Guardians will uh, begin game two here against the Tigers shortly. We'll be back. Stay with us.